Hello, dear friends, my lovely audiences. Welcome to the East West Show. Jack Chow hosting the East West Show on the ICT TV. Uh, we used to use the GNE TV. Right now, we're using this ICT TV because we're affiliated with the CBS. All right, uh, that's a uh, big, big, big step that we made recently, and uh, we are now a proud member of the CBS network. Uh, by that, I would uh, introduce you. My two great friend, uh, to my right hand side is principal of the Coronado uh, High School. Uh, he, she, and uh, her students uh, today, a bunch of them. First student uh, Giovanni. So to both of them, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, of course, I heard the name of the school, though. Right. I don't know much about your school. Okay. So, uh, normally, I would like to uh, you to start with. Uh, okay. Uh, obviously, I would like you to start with the introduction of your school, please. Okay. I'm, I'm proud to introduce our school. It's a uh, mm -hmm. it's Coronado High School, so it's part of the West Covina Unified School District. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's an alternative or continuation school, so it's a school for students who maybe the, the large comprehensive school didn't really fit them, and mm -hmm. so they have the opportunity to come to our smaller campus. Mm -hmm. It has a very family feel to it. Uh, we have about 240 students on campus uh, in a variety of different programs, um, but they're all there with the goal of either continuing on uh, to college, to vocational school, or military. Those are the three things that we oh. push the students to. And so I'm here with the leadership students from the school. We have a, a great program um, of leadership, and so I'm gonna, I'll let them explain that to you. But so it's a small high school. It's part of the West Covina Unified School District. And, um, I see. Yeah, I it's, see. A, it's a great place to be. A little bit about yourself, please. Oh, gosh. I was born and raised in West Covina. Ah. Uh, this area is very familiar to me. My mom still lives in her house just a couple miles from here. Ah. I went to Monta Vista Elementary School, and uh, I graduated from Edgewood High School. Um, so I, I tried to leave the area several times. I lived in Africa and all over the U.S. And then I ended up back here, ah. <laughs> back home. <laughs> okay, good, good, So good. I worked for West Covina for, mm. this is my 22nd year in the school East district. East West holds yeah. best. Yes, that's right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. All right, East West holds best. Uh, of course, I'm a fan of education. I'm right. a supporter of education. My friend Lou Aradano Absolutely. knows that a lot. I don't support this uh, education for nothing because uh, a strong belief that I hold on to is that you have a stronger education, you have a stronger future. Absolutely. Right? You feel to have a stronger education, obviously you know the the consequences, right? right? right. It's not a, something we're talking about today, something we're talking about forever. Right? Right. Now for posterity, all the way it goes on. Now I'm sitting here, well, 20, 30, well, not maybe that long, maybe 10 years ago. Well, it could be him. It could be somebody else. Mm -hmm. It goes on and on and on. Right. So that's why we pay lots of attention to education, right? right? In education, though, we're talking about uh, there are lots of uh, programs. I recently heard about the uh, the college curriculum program. Is that starting in your, your school already? Um, you mean college and career uh -huh. readiness? Oh. Yeah, I think that, that's something I think that, that uh, we have career technical programs, mm -hmm. college readiness, and so I think, um, I, I mean, at least I know, I can speak to the schools in West Covina, that that's mm -hmm. a priority, is making sure that students are college and career ready in terms of the kinds of classes they have and opportunities to collaborate in those classes, more project-based learning. Uh, mm -hmm. So we want the teacher doing less work. And we want the students collaborating more because that's really like you know what they're going to be doing when they're out in the in the workforce. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you have to course. talk to yeah, people yeah, yeah. Sure, just like sure, you do sure, every sure, day. Sure, sure, sure. And so uh -huh. uh, yeah, so mm -hmm. that's definitely a priority in, in West Covina and, and at Coronado uh, mm -hmm. as well. And you can't always deny the fact some of them might be the president of the United States. Yeah, there's knows? there's some somebody's going to be the yeah. president and who's somebody, to say? Yeah. Somebody has to do the job. Absolutely. Right? Anyway, all right. To you, my uh, young fella, <laughs> uh, Giovanni, right? So I, uh, I can explain why I wear this jacket, though. But can you explain to me why you're wearing that shirt? I'm wearing this shirt because I was specifically um, selected from all the students in our school as, as my fellow team leadership members. 
that we were the ones that were outstanding and outgoing and always looks for another opportunities to help other people. Mm-hmm. All right, good, 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 good. Uh, such a short statement, but strong, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> short statement, there. but in your vocabulary or a dictionary whatsoever, how do you explain the word the leadership? Leadership. It's not a quiz, just a chat, all right? Feel mm-hmm. easy, feel mm-hmm. relaxed. Leadership to me would mean like outstanding. Um, would like leadership. No one gets left behind. You always go back and try to help them. As any other student would that really needs help. Uh, it's like teamwork. Mm. Working as one. Teamwork. Mm. Yes. So what do you what do you actually do? Leadership. We help the school with events. We help um, the principal with with like helping students out if they ever need help, making posters, making the school look nice, and just getting our school out there so people could hear about us. Hmm. All right, very good, very good, yeah. Mm-hmm. He, 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 he looks like a very nice boy. He is a very nice or boy. Very nice boy right? Yeah, he's a very nice boy. Well, to be honest with you, <laughs> I should not, and this is a mistake I end up here. I should oh, be yeah? a teacher. Yeah? I sh- well, I, I like school job. <laughs> I like school job. I like, uh, being amongst the kids, mm-hmm. and well, by doing that, you get young, right? Absolutely. Number one, right? Yes, you get I young, forget right? how old I am. And then you <laughs> communicate with those with those guys right. with in their language, right? In their language, right? So, well, that's good. So, how do you see the school recently with the uh, school district? Because uh, I believe the school district has done quite a wonderful job. Absolutely. So, uh, need your comment on that, please. Yeah, I mean the. I mean, I, I've been from this. Uh, I've been familiar with the school uh, throughout all my years in West Covina, and I've just seen, especially in the last few years, maybe two to three years, uh, I've seen a, a, a real switch in terms of the focus of the the expectations of the students is higher. Mm. Uh, so that there's an expectation that the students are going to be ready for whatever they want to do after high school. There's more career programs on campus. Okay, For example, okay. we have a we have a photovoltaics class mm-hmm. where the students can take it, and they take uh, they get certified. And so after high school, they they have a certification. Oh, they even to get install. certified. Yeah, yeah. So there's more. There's uh, there's retail classes. There's uh, emergency uh, medicine classes. And so oh. the district has really made a, a push to to have more hands-on classes where students can get certified in high school so they have opportunities sure. right after high school if they want yeah. to join the, the that means the moment they are out of the door of the school right they, they, they have can they have some opportunity next step yeah. walk into the labor force right exactly very good very yeah, good yeah. so what will you be after school Me? i mean after you graduate i was thinking about just working with solar panels because mm-hmm. of the other class we took photovoltaic actually help me understand more about solar panels and how to maintain them and how do they work so what you wanted to do as a profession for me profession i'm still i still have like my thoughts but i would like to be like an engineer you could say engineer engineer on what i'm still debating about <laughs> that <laughs> engineer all right engineer all right good 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 well so those kids, you never know them. You never know them, and there's lots of uh, right, right. lots of uh, uh, untold, un- unpredicted uh, uh, future. However, you started at your point, at your point though, to give them the right direction, Absolutely. push them from the right point uh, to the right direction. Well, that's a, yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. We want them. I mean, we, we want all students to feel like. If there's something they want to do, they they have the capability of doing it, mm. and, and all they have to do is put in the effort. Yeah. And so, if there's something they're interested in after high school, there's no, sure. there's no. We want them to have every door open to them, and all they have to do is work for it. And the other day, I was talking with uh, with the candidate for a school uh, school board, mm-hmm. and she says that the most of the kids, some of the kids entering that program, though, at this stage, they might have already mastered one or two skills right right so another word uh say suppose in his case even if he changed his mind not being an engineer if he needs a job right away the family says okay go get a job go get a job right away 
What do you think you are ready of right now? I mean, I could be. A, what can you do now? I know, I know how to do hands-on work. Like I could become a computer, computer. Um, what's it called? Oh, ah, computer. Like a programmer. Yeah, like a programmer. Data programmer, or at least the data data. Then you can do that input, right? Yeah, okay. okay. And the output thing, right? Good. Yeah. Very good. And my dear friends, my lovely audiences, when in terms of education, you are always not necessarily always talking about uh, ready for Howard, for Stanford, for, for, for whatever. And I know I myself try so hard, I have never made, made myself to Howard. Does that mean I'm not successful? No, I am successful. I'm very successful. I'm super successful. Why? Because it's your efforts to love what you do, your efforts and your uh, skills. You're training yourself hard, though, and you love your job. That makes you successful. You you don't have to be necessarily necessarily Howard. And on the other hand, I see lots of lots of young kids jump over the window to their death. Mm -hmm. Well, there's bad examples, right? right. Uh, now, uh, I encourage my audiences, I encourage you to educate your kids to the right way, not the right school, right? And I adore the system so much uh, with that school, with your wonderful school, with your wonderful program. We thank you very much thank for you having so brought thank the you school. So much and thank you for my show. Thank you for having us on. Thank you, for thank you very show. much for, for giving right. us this opportunity. And the next segment, starting the next segment, we're going to take uh, three groups of two, two, two students to testify if they are doing a good job. Hello, dear friends, my lovely audiences. Welcome back to the show, Jack Chow, on the East West Show with GNE TV. Now I have a brand new name here, then ICT TV, because the affiliation with the CBS, we have a brand name, brand new name of ourselves. We like both names, and because each of them stand for glory, right? Lots of glory. Uh, uh, well, the second segment of the show, though, with me, I have two lovely young girl, young woman, called a young woman, not girl, and uh, I have Stephanie, and I have a Kaylin. Kaylin. <laughs> so, to both of you, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Very for good. Us. Very good. So, say something about yourself, including your family, and your parents, brother, sisters, if you have any. Or anything you want to start yourself? Okay, um, so um, my name is Stephanie, and um, I am a very uh, outgoing person. Mm -hmm. I'm a type of person to um, always like to speak to people and really get to know um, how they are or why they are like they are. Mm -hmm. And um, I also, I also feel like I'm really friendly, you know, and I like to give to other people because it makes me feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. And um, as my family, my both my parents are not together. And um, I'm not so close to my mother or my father, which is why I'm really independent and really um, motivated to um, do many things for mm. myself and for my future. Very good. Yes. Very good. Very good. Thank you. And about you? Um, my name's Kayleen. Um, I'm currently a senior at Coronado High School. Um, I'm also a member of Leadership, which is um, a group which we in which we help students like with whatever they need to do if they're having trouble in their classes or if they just need somebody to talk to we're always there for them um, as for myself personally I I kind of came up as a secluded person as a secluded girl throughout high school but recently in my senior year I've been communicating more with people and I've been trying to get myself out there because I came to realize that if I don't have connections with other people then it's I won't really get anywhere therefore I have to like really put myself out there and make sure that I could have connections if I ever need them for when I'm older. Very good, very good. I like the uh, introduction, and uh, it is almost like a statement, right? And I like the part you are an outgoing person. Well, by outgoing, what do you mean? I mean, um, a lot of the people that I meet, um, I get, um, they, for some reason, they feel really 
um, trust, like trust, they really trust me, so they um, tell me a lot of like themselves, and it's like mm -hmm. I'm a really good listener, so you know, and then I'm really uh, have good communication skills, so it's easy for me to talk to people or to just make friends. Mm -hmm. so. Very good, very good. And you and there were the same question I'm asking a uh, different way. It might mean the same thing. For leadership, you're talking about you have to have to have to be a leader. Yes. You consider yourself as a leader, right? Yes. The leader or whatever, a leader. So in your eye, in your take, what is so important to be a leader? To be a leader, you're not meant to tell people where to go or what steps to take to reach something. You have to guide them. You have to be patient with them. To be a leader, you really have to like make sure that you're there for other people and make sure that you're there for whatever they need. Um, if that's help with home or homework or if they just if they just want like if they need somebody to talk to I always want to make sure I'm there for them mm. I never want to make any I never want anybody to feel like they don't have somebody to turn to because I've been in a few positions like that myself and I realize that as a leader I really must make sure like that I that I'll be able to give them advice or help very them good they need. very good very good philosophy a question or for both of you though, do you know in human history, you may go as, as long as you wish, right, to where human race start, start it, right? So how come, I mean, how come the first, the first leader made themselves, made himself the leader in the, in the old tribe back in the jungle when we were uh, when we were monkeys, whatsoever. Um, and a lot of what the makes that very monkey the leader? Uh, maybe because they outstand from um, probably the rest of the monkeys or like the rest of the people. Um, and it's probably for something that they have accomplished or for something that um, a lot of people are inspired or they look up to them as a mentor. Mm, good. And you? Um, I believe that what makes them a leader is that they they vow to protect the other like the other people in their tribe or whatever and whoever is in it like they're always they vow to protect them they vow to help them out they help to like they vow to guide them and that's what makes the other people look up to them because they have somebody to guide them they have somebody they they can turn to if they if they find themselves in like a tough spot very good very good by that i can tell that the school has really taught you guys well all right, and uh, when I was uh, was your age, though, of course, luckily enough, uh, I was taught the same way. Right, as a leader, you have to care for others, you have to protect others, so you earn the trust. Right, if you were the first one running away, though, you would never be a leader. You would never be a leader, right? So you are always the last one running away from risk. And you are always the first one when there's a problem that you jump on. Right? And then, of course, in the overall comment, though, you do, you do more than others. How about that? Yeah. Right? Very good. Thank you for the first agreement, though. And I was asking the previous uh, student for, uh, about what his ready uh, moment out of the school uh, or gradu out of graduation. How are you ready? Uh, about graduation? Um, I am ready about graduation because I am really excited to just get my future started. You know, um, yeah, I know it's 18 such a young age, but I have like um, so many dreams to just help people out, to go around the world and to um, be a change in something. So I would like to just get out there and like um, go to college, study what I have to do, you know, and then like try my best and really um, get myself out there, like not for myself, but for the other people as well. Mm -hmm. What you will be, what will you be? Um, I would yeah. like to be a juvenile probation officer. Ah, officer, on what subject? Um, a juvenile profession officer. Oh, a juvenile, juvenile yeah. professor. Okay, yeah. very good. And you? Um, for me, I feel like I'm prepared for graduation because I've already started looking into colleges that, um, with majors that interest me. And I really... Major what? Majors. Uh -huh. uh, I have a few right now. Mm -hmm. I want to become either a digital artist, um, 
a psychologist or or something else but oh, those are the main two digital artist oh that's a that's a hot, hot piece of cake yeah right yeah. very hot right okay and how do you like uh, anybody wants to take say for example anthropology for for a major i i was thinking about that uh, yes <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding or shake or shakespeare for a for a no, no. shakespeare no no, you, you know that, right? No. You know that, right? you? Uh, Shakespeare, no, but anthropology <laughs> does interest me. All right, good. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm kidding. However, I do mean something. I mean, well, anyway, Shakespeare is always a subject you want to study with, right? And we'll go, of course, anthropology is also somewhere to go. Uh, is it necessary or not, not necessary to do it now, though? I leave it to the principal. Uh, when she comes back, I'll ask her about it. So how do you appreciate the school, Coronado School, who gave you this much? And either you? Um, for me, when I, when I um, tran transferred to the school, I was in a very tough position. I wasn't offered many opportunities to um, really better myself back at the high school in which I attended. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I transferred to Coronado, the, the, um, the staff there, they really helped me out with what I was going through and they made sure that I had my eyes set straight on like passing and graduating and making sure that I was on track to graduate on time. Mm -hmm. And that really, that really opened my eyes to a lot because I realized that people I never knew in my life like really cared about me and they started helping me and I really appreciate that that made me that helped me grow a lot as a person very good how do you appreciate your school I appreciate my school because um, like the same thing as Kareen um, when I came to the school I was not um, so um, in a good position but once I got in that school like they helped me get my feet and out there you know they helped me um, to start thinking about the future and really open my eyes to be a better person and probably one of the best persons you know and now like that they have um, honored me in like multiple ways like I feel like I have made a difference and like they made a difference in myself you know to become mm. a better person than I used to be all right all right I must say to your principal that uh, she has done uh, a great job uh, by educating you guys to the way you are, to where you are. And to me, of course, you always want to go back when you've grown up to your uh, old schools, right? Uh, however, uh, to look back into all the schools you have been to, uh, was elementary school or even kinder, you were too young, you knew nothing but play right and then when you go college whatsoever you uh, you are going from classroom to library from uh, with a bundle bundle of books all the time though only only high school is the school that you are between childhood and adulthood you are knowing something you're don't you don't know something you are sometimes mystified you sometimes have a strong mind in between though that is the area you can be shaped. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. If you grown up a, a good person because it is you are shaped at high school. Right. You know you know in the industry, in the in the in the, in the plant big plant, they do casting. You know they do casting? They 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 heat the metal to a point they become liquid metal become liquid right and they use a more mold they pour, put it in right but in the end they shape it into the shape of the mold right high school to me is like uh, the mold is a little mold because you are still warm you're still soft you can be shaped right too soon no nothing could be done too late too late right good and uh I like the fact that you are so appreciative to your school. You are so appreciative to your school. And we all uh, give a big credit for the Coronada High School, right? My dear audience, I love the audience, is I am talking, having a nice conversation uh, with this young woman. And I believe, I believe that I speak a little bit of their language. And I thank you very much for the uh, for, for sharing with me and uh, nice talking to you. So that wraps up this segment. See you later.
Hello, dear friends, lovely audiences. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show. Jack Chow on the East West Show with the GD TV, with the ICT TV. We are our. This is our brand new、uh, name with the affiliation、uh, with the CBS. So to continue talking about the wonderful school for Coronado High School, I heard the name loud. Several times, never had the chance to sit down with the student at school, as well as the principals. Today is the chance. I had a discussion with the principal and the three of the students so far. I'm under the impression that the school is、uh, implementing a good program that to get the kids ready ahead of time. Ahead of time, even before they get graduate, ready to go to the society. Now, next segment, I have Gina and I have Brittany. So, to both of you, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank、right. you. Welcome to the show. So, something about yourself, please. Um, I'm very quiet. You don't want to tell me about your money, household <laughs> income, like that kind of thing. You are not in charge of that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm very quiet, but I'm very talkative. I'm nice, outgoing. I love helping others with like how they live.、Mm -hmm. I don't like how they live, so I want to help that. Like I want to change that. Um. Just, I'm very proud to be in the school I am because without it, I wouldn't be here today.、Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. And something about yourself?、Um, I'm very positive, and I like to give out the vibe of、um, positivity to other people, so they can always feel like、um, happy. And I like to,、um, uh, what's the word?、Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just very like. Energetic and like I'm、oh, a good, funny good. person, good. and I'm just、uh -huh. like very I just like making people、mm. laugh and making them feel like really good. Oh, very good,、themselves. very good.、Uh, so positive people, right? So what kind of family、uh, ground family are you from? Um, how about your parents? My parents, they're still together.、Um, I live with both of them.、Um, They're very. They taught me to be very positive too. They're they're very outgoing people, and、mm. they just they teach me to be responsible because they're very responsible, and、mm. they just want me to be、uh, like to better myself every day. I see. I see. How about your family? They're very well, very、uh, happy. All right. Your parents? Very happy. Hmm.、Oh, very good. Very good.、Mm. Uh, of course, a happy family produces a happy kid, right? And the happy kids enjoy the happy family. Mm, and、yeah. it goes in a cycle on and on, and makes the family a happier family. Something、mm -hmm. like that, right? How do you like your school, though? I I、uh, really enjoy my school. I like it actually better than all the schools I've been to because my other schools I wasn't very motivated. But、um, well, when I came here,、uh, when I started last year, I wasn't very motivated. But this year, I'm motivated、mm -hmm. to do like everything with the school. Like I just want to be a part of everything and just like make everybody feel part of. Everything, so I like.、Mm. I just enjoy the school a lot. I see. How do you like the school? I like it very well. I like it more than I like my old school. It's because this school helps me. Like, it if I need help, they know and they're like pull me aside、mm. and like, okay, like this is where you need help, and they'll help me. Other schools, they don't. They say they do, and they're just.、Mm. They don't get there.、Oh. So. Okay, very good. Okay, it helps me. I know that the, you, the leadership program, you guys always had, all have that on on the shirt, though. The leadership program. What do you do within the program? Um. Well, we just like to um have school spirit, make people have not make them, but like have them participate in like school events, and we just want to be there for them, and just like all work together just to make everybody feel like um. Wanted and happy, and just make them feel comfortable in their environment.、Mm. And your understanding of the program, please. Yes,、um, it's just to like show spirit and how to bring people who are not inside the school and not more.、Um, what's that word like? 
-hmm. they're not involved in school it's to help them be part of the school so mm -hmm. that they feel welcomed and like it's not like a bad school we are friendly mm -hmm. so it's just to help us help them be a part mm -hmm. of the school uh, could any of you give me an example of a uh, uh, recent situation or a story where you help others? Um, oh, that's right. We, uh, we recently just finished a program, Top Soccer, where we help um, special kids like practice soccer and we do that on our um, mm. after hours and we just make them like happy and like make them feel like, um, make them enjoy the activity that um, we're partic or they're participating mm. in. Okay, okay. And do you, have you recently been involved in anything, the helping others? Um, yeah, I've been volunteering places and just helping kids, little kids, uh, adults, just help them with whatever they need. Like if they need help with mm. homework, if they need help with walking down the stairs, I'll just help them. Mm. How are you both doing academically? I think I'm doing really good, um, considering my other years in mm -hmm. high school. Um, I should be graduating, I think, a month early or two months early. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Not bad, are you? Mine is very well. It's very uh, great. I'm going to be an early graduate, so mm -hmm. I'm very happy. If I would have stayed in another school mm. it would have been really Any, bad. Anything else for for example lots of girls like dancing or instrum, doing intri instrumental music or stuff like that or acrobats or anything? Um, no I'm just very like singing? No <laughs> I'm just um, I'm more <laughs> like I like to make people laugh like okay. a comedian kind of oh you can't do a do a, do a comedian you can tell a story tell jokes right yeah <laughs> but in, in not in a traditional joke way in like my own type of joke way like i just it just comes out oh okay <laughs> very good very good and you um, you I have anything know. in you that you think you can uh, look at it as specialty just helping others, like I, that's what I enjoy doing. I love helping others because I see people struggling and I feel mm. like I, I don't like how I'm just, I sit here and I don't do anything. Mm. Like I wanna be able to help, the, help people. Very good, very good. So at school though, uh, I see uh, lots of uh, reports about uh, bullying. Right, there are tough kids, especially senior among seniors. They bully each other, or they bully their own students. Right. So, how about your school? Is there anything of that? Mm, well, not really, not like that, because everybody just minds their own business. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, if there were something like that, it would be um, handled immediately, because our school they taught us like they don't tolerate that. Like mm -hmm. that's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. And are you kids, or I may probably not call you kids, or you're a young woman interested in any kind of politics? Um, or do you talk about politics at school? Mm, well, sometimes, but we don't go into deep detail. We just give yeah. our opinions on mm. some of the things we hear about. And that's, yeah, that's just about it. We don't go to You like Donald Trump? <laughs> like that? <laughs> yeah. Do you like Donald Trump? <laughs> Well, I don't like some of the things he's doing. He's not, it's not right. <laughs> do you like Donald Trump? No. No? no Why? Why? Why do you it's like that? Like, I'm, I'm just, it's, it's not, not politics. I'm kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. It's For the, the fun of it. It's the things he says that makes us yeah. not want it. Like, not why. It's like not appropriate him. for yeah. a president to be saying. Yeah. And like, when he, all over you're, Twitter You're, and you're saying the manner. You're saying the manner, his manner. Yes, he, yeah. he doesn't have any manners. He's just uh -huh. very like, he, whatever comes to mind, it doesn't matter if it's disrespectful or not, he thinks he can say it. Mm. Because he's, I don't know, but like I feel like he thinks he's entitled 
to say whatever he wants because mm. he's in that position. And uh, you said that uh, the way he sees things, he says no, things? He says things, yeah. It's just uh -huh. it's not His okay. expression you do? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay. And uh, uh, about politics, do you know uh, how many parties we have? Major parties? Um, there's the Democratic, right? And then the Republican. Parties. Do we, uh, how many major major parties do we have in this country? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know All that. Right, I'm okay. not really <laughs> I'm just, uh, like that. I'm just testing my water, okay? <laughs> just testing water. Like you don't know either? No. Okay, very good. Sorry. Okay. Stay away from power. Stay away from politics. That's why I'm testing you. <laughs> to get to the conclusion, you're doing all right. You're, you're better off doing that way. Stay away from politics, right? So anyway, if, I, if anybody asks you, do you like Donald Trump? You know the best answer? Do I have to? <laughs> That's the best answer. Right? I do like I have that. to? <laughs> right? right. Or I ask you, how many parties, parties, different parties, a major party in the United States? Do I have to know? <laughs> Something like that. Right. Anyway, uh, knowing a little bit, but you don't want to say it. Anyway, all right. Uh, my dear friend, today I'm chatting with uh, two young, for young lady of uh, uh, wonderful high school. And they are Gina and they are Brittany. And they answered, of course, I asked, I asked them questions. Uh, some of them are hard to answer, but you know, they kind of uh, coped along with me quite so well. And I believe the program has taught them a lot. It taught, taught them a lot. A lot. Of they both expressed as such that before they entered that uh, school, the program, they were a different kind of a uh, person. Right now, they are, they are uh, well, the, 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 another different kind of person. Well, they like the school, they like helping others, right? Okay, my dear friends, let's uh, call it a segment. We will continue with the next one. Hello, dear friends, lovely audiences. Welcome back to the show. Uh, my dear friend, ladies and gentlemen, if you happen to be somebody's parents, though, especially you have a high schooler, teenager at home, you will probably like what we're talking about. We're talking about a uh, Coronado High School, a wonderful school in the West Covina District, uh, school district. And I know this is the school district for quite a bit. And I know, I know, uh, I know you're a superintendent, mm -hmm. Mr. Charles, 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 Charles Kimman, yeah. right? Yes. Okay. I know him and the lots of board members. And today we're talking about the high school uh, uh, that uh, has the program called Leadership. And I have in this segment the principal, Lisa, and also uh, for a new student, uh, Hugo, with us. Hugo is wearing some uh, somebody else's shirt. Uh, disregard that, but... Uh, <laughs> He is a uh, one of the leadership program. To both of you once again, Thank welcome you. to the show. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you for having us. Very good, very good. So what brought you to the school and what brought you to the leadership program? Well, um, in all honesty, sir, uh, my behavior is what brought me to the school Coronado. And, you know, I wasn't really doing well in the other school because I didn't have as much support. So in this school, I, I really love it because mm -hmm. the kids here are sweet, nice, energetic, welcoming, warming, and I get a lot more support at this school mm -hmm. and it's really helpful and it got me into leadership. When you say you were not doing so well, what do you mean? Uh, well, I was misbehaving. I, was, I wasn't showing up to class. And I was, I mean, I was just a terrible little toddler back in school. Mm. So I grew out of that and I became this nice, young, generous man. 
All right, bring back the principal. You feel <laughs> you must be proud of what yeah, you have done, I, right? Well, it's not so, me; it's them. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of them for sure. Oh, okay, Absolutely. Okay. And uh, what do you think? I mean, how how the uh, group, leadership group do, do, and how I mean together, they well they make this young man wonderful. Oh yeah, um, I think you know everybody. That's the one thing about a school like Coronado is that there's everyone has. It's sort of a, everyone who maybe didn't fit in at the other school has found a home. Mm. And so that's what we try to provide for the students there is a place where they feel comfortable because it's only when you feel comfortable and safe where you're going to be able to excel academically. Mm. And so I think once they found that place, then all of these students, um, they were able to, to get down and motivate and, and start thinking about what they want to do after high school. And so I think it, it, a school like this has made a big difference for these students. And I, yeah, I'm super proud of them. I'm getting, the, I'm getting like the teary feels <laughs> All right, talking good, about good. them. Yeah. All right. yeah. And speaking of leadership, I see a leadership from your end, though. I'm talking about as a principal, you really provide, uh, provided a, uh, a strong leadership to lead this young woman and young man to go the right away. We have, so our, our, our principal, Dr. Pendleton, and their leadership advisor, Mr. Varos, and their counselor, Ms. Cruz, Ms. Hernandez. Uh, it, takes a, it takes a village, right? Yeah. And so Coronado is definitely mm. a, a village, and, and everyone there cares about these kids and mm. wants them to do well and loves them, so. Yeah. All right, all right. So how do you like the, uh, the, the uh, program, the leadership program? Well, the program is very awesome. Uh, we get to help special needs children. We get to help everyone in that school. We get to inform them about basketball games, football, soccer, uh, rallies, and it's just very pleasuring to see a smile on everybody's face at school when they hear stuff like that's about to happen. Mm -hmm. Very good. And uh, anything about yourself, your family stuff? Your brothers, sisters? Uh, my brothers and sisters are very successful. My brother does roofing. My sister works at Starbucks. And um, huh. my father works for LA County. So Ooh. we are living pretty good. And we are investing in a house. So, How many of the students are in the leadership program? Um, just a handful of students. So we have these six students that serve uh, the other roughly 240 students on campus. Um, there's mm -hmm. no limit to how many students there can be. Um, they just want to make, they just want the right students in the program. Um, and so it's by interview. Uh, the students have to have recommendation from other teachers. Um, so there are students that, that probably wanted to be in the program, but weren't, weren't quite ready. Uh, because I feel like as a leader, you set an example for the other students on campus. So we want to make sure the right students are in the program. So definitely these students are the right ones. I think you can tell by talking to them. They're the right <laughs> yeah. ones for this program. Because mm. they, Coronado has a, a motto, um, service through volunteerism. Uh. And so one of the things, the best things about the school is these students um, volunteer dozens and dozens, hundreds of hours during the year for programs with special needs children, uh, community events, organizations, uh, 5Ks, any of the service organizations, Kiwanis, Rotary, Lions. So they're out there putting themselves, you know, Coronado kind of has a name, a reputation for volunteerism. And these kids, these students are the ones that kind of organize all that. So variety of activities, a variety, right? A, a huge you, variety. You, at a school level, try to get the kids uh, involved, right? Absolutely, okay. yes. So after you involve uh, in the program, do you have any moment or time to have a street funds with your with your buddies or whoever doing something else um well i'm not really sure um all i can say is that i really dedicate my time and my spare time to leadership whenever i get the chance I, yes you still have the most time to have fun Yes, I do. Mm, I see, I see. At school, though, there is a lot of uh, people, a, lot, a big talk about uh, uh, the challenge of say no to drugs. Mm -hmm. right? And how do you teach the school, uh, the school for our kids to say no to drugs? Oh, yeah. So, I, I mean, in my 22 years in West Covina, I've taught everything from elementary, middle, high school, 
I've been a high school administrator. So I think the important thing, especially in the school district, is to, to start that message when the students are young, mm. uh, to sort of teach them about what are the, the outcomes going to be if they, if they make this bad choice. We're all going to face choices in our lives. We're all going to have paths, right, mm. that lead one way or another way. And we want them to be educated in terms of if this is the path you choose, these are, these are things that are going to happen to you on that path. Mm -hmm. If this is the path you choose, these are. So we all know the difference between right and wrong. It's whether or not we have the ma maturity and, and can control our impulses when we're faced with that choice. And so those are the things we want to teach the, children, the students is you're all going to be faced with these things. These things are going to be offered to you. You're going to have opportunities to make wrong choices. If you're asked, should you do this or not? You know that this is not a right thing to do. Are you mm. gonna be able to make the choice in that moment uh, to, to make the right choice? And so that's the thing, that's always something that from, from kindergarten through 12th grade, that we, we try to teach the students. And I know that uh, uh, California law recently, starting last year and active this year, legalized the marijuana, right? So I never had the chance to listen to a educator, mm -hmm. to a school administrator say anything about it. So I may as well ask you that. Sure. What's your take about the legalization of <laughs> marijuana? Well, I, I think one of the important things to realize is that our brains aren't fully developed until we're well into our mid-20s. And so anything that we put into our bodies that's going to maybe interfere with uh, with our, our ability to gain information, mm -hmm. to learn things, to make choices. Uh, and and oh. so I definitely don't think that uh, if there's something that, that we have an opportunity to do that's not good for us, I think we, we always need to make the better choice of, of making the healthy choice. Then why does, why does, they, why does the state still, still legalize it? Uh, that's, a, that's a good, there's a, I think it's a, I think a lot of the, <laughs> yeah, we're right. starting to get it. No, mm -hmm. I, I just, I mean, there's a lot of things that are legal that aren't good for us, um, right? You know, where we're, cigarettes are, are shown to be harmful, yet they're accessible to people. There's electronic cigarettes now that are, I think, they're going to determine that are not healthy. So it's just a matter of, of whether or not we choose to do those things when we're adults. Um, but the the best thing we can do is educate in terms of knowing, <laughs> uh, knowing, you know, uh, knowing what's I'm good for us. I'm going to ask Hugo the same thing, right? What's your comment about the legalization of marijuana? Well, my comment for that is uh, I think that's kind of dangerous because um, nowadays people just smoke marijuana like it's a cigarette. And mm. you know, I think it's very dangerous because there are many children that do not know how to uh, take responsibility or be responsible for their actions. Uh, and, you know, I think uh, marijuana should be illegal. Should be legal? Should be illegal. Should be illegal. Yes. Good, 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 good. Uh, I have uh, lots of uh, problems understanding the California laws, mm -hmm. right? And I may, by the way, ask you how many bathrooms do you have? Two or three or four whatsoever? Oh, at Coronado? Yeah, uh -huh. oh, we have a lot of bathrooms at Coronado. No, uh -huh. Yes. No, no, I mean, when I say, when I say two, when I say boys, girls, right? Do oh, okay. you have the third one? Uh, okay. No, but um, our students, um, our students are allowed to use whatever bathroom that they identify with. So if, uh, so if a student's comfortable going into one restroom. We also have, uh, if students aren't comfortable with the male or female restrooms, we have off, uh, restrooms in the office that the students can come and use um, so that, so that which, whichever so restroom they you feel are not with. You are not having the necessarily the third bathroom, but you allow their, them the, the, the freedom of visiting whichever they feel comfortable with. Right. So we have the, the male and female bathrooms on campus, and then in mm. the office we have bathrooms that are, that are available to any student, single bathrooms mm. that aren't attached to other bathrooms. So students can use those if they're not comfortable using the other bathrooms, all right, too. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, okay, we, we okay. happen to be on a campus that has had other programs, and we have a lot of bathrooms. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, okay, very good. All right, and after school, what do you do? Uh, any hobby? Uh, well, one of my hobbies was uh, playing hockey after school. Uh, every day I'd go to practice and 
Sometimes I'd have hockey games, but uh, I recently got out of hockey because uh, I dislocated my shoulder one time uh, from being hockey checked. So mm. that was very hurtful, wasn't nice. Um, mm -hmm. So I decided to try something different like soccer. Uh, I did like soccer, but that didn't work out. So right now I am free to do or not free to do, mm. free to go see what other hobby I can get into. Mm -hmm. All right, anyway, so of course, uh, on, the positive, on the positive side, okay, you have lots of uh, good students, mm -hmm. right? Yes, absolutely. And there, that doesn't mean that it might uh, come to some time when you have to handle the hard to deal student. Oh, yes. Right? So when you have somebody well, who's uh, his age, mm -hmm. so hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. As a principal, what do you do? We like to involve the family as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I always tell the students, there's, it's like a stool with three legs. There's the school, the student, and the family. And unless all of us are involved, the stool's not gonna be able to stand up. And so we're all there for the benefit of the student, to support the student, but it really involves the family and the, and the school to help mm -hmm. that student uh, if the students may be doing things that it's interfering with their education. They're making choices that could put them in a position where mm -hmm. they, you know, if they're, if they're making choices that are illegal, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we do is try to work with the family, provide support for the student. Mm -hmm. uh, we have at Coronado, we have a lot of uh, therapists, psychologists, nurses, um, probation officers. So we have a lot of support for students to kind of figure out, you know, w there's always a reason why we're doing the things we're doing. And so we want to figure out why are they, why are, th why are these students doing the things they're doing, and what what we can do to kind of help them make better choices. Mm. So I always approach discipline from a place of curiosity rather than uh. consequence, because uh, consequences don't work. Otherwise, people would only get one speeding ticket or one one late library book fine. Or I whatever. was wondering. I was wondering yeah. <laughs> if uh, the uh, legalization of marijuana made your job even uh, tougher. Uh, no. Because one, on one hand, you have uh, the pr problematic students, right. Right? and the other, on the other, the law kind of helping them by legalizing it. So as an educator, standing in between, though, you find right. yourself caught? Uh, no, I, I, don't, I don't. Since marijuana has been legal, I haven't really seen a, an increase in use on campus. Uh, I think there's a certain amount of, of illegal substances on any high school campus, but I don't think uh, that, that uh, legalization has really impacted that so far. I think it was accessible before. It's accessible now. It's still illegal for students under 18 to, to possess anyway. And so if our students are in possession of it, it's still, it's still illegal for them because they're not of age to have it. Okay, okay, uh, right, right. Yes. They, no, the age is still applied. Right, right. right. So our yeah. students are still minors, and so even oh, though see, it's legal see, for see. some people to have, it's still not legal for our students. How about smoking? Regular as a cigarette smoking? You know, I've seen, I see a little bit less of that than, than there used to be. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit more use of, of the electronic cigarettes, uh -huh. those kind of things, the vape pens and things like that, All right, all right. Uh, are becoming more of a use. And, and uh, I know when students first started using those, I, was, I would tell them, like, uh, <laughs> these are going to be the, there's a chemical reaction happening uh, in these and uh, you're inhaling uh, it that cannot uh, be good for you uh, it's uh, the same thing anyway yeah but the right. but so but um but we don't have you know there's once in a while things like that but we don't have too we don't have too too much of that on our campus it's a All really right. small campus and there's a lot of people a lot of adults uh, there and so sure. uh students really tend to to kind of follow the rules and do the right thing all right thing. thank yeah. you very much uh my dear audience like i said in the first segment though Whenever there is a, a good education, you have a good future. Right. When you fail to have that, you do not have a future, right? So this young man right in front of me, who knows, giving 20 year, 10 year time, what it will be, what it will be, right? So could be a CEO of a of Microsoft, right, of, never uh, know. Of, a, well, of, of anything, right? right? Nobody can tell. So when the school starts right now making it possible to every kid to achieve whatever they want to achieve though. The school is wonderful. I respect uh, uh, the school, I respect the program, and I respect your, you so your job, uh, excellent job. 
And to uh, all the students, I give them uh, my biggest congr congratulations. And to you, Hugo, thank you for uh, joining me. Yes. Thank you for sharing yes. your story. And uh, we'll see you next time, I guess.